the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, and pray that the blessings of our one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come upon us and abide in us. On behalf of the World Council of Churches, I welcome you to our first World Council of Churches Global Ecumenical Prayer Online, which concludes this year's annual week of prayer for Christian unity. Traditionally prepared together by the World Council of Churches and the Pontifical Council for Promoting Christian Unity of the Catholic Church. As in many places, restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic are making it difficult to physically gather. This global online celebration will allow us to pray together wherever we are. I am glad, grateful, and encouraged to see gathered together in prayer, heads of churches and church leaders from different traditions, members of the World Council of Churches leadership and governing bodies, colleagues from the World Council of Churches, from Christian World Communions, from international Christian organizations and partners, the community of students from the Ecumenical Institute at Bosse, the sisters from the Grand Cham community in Switzerland, and all of you representing our strong and wide fellowship of 350 churches from all over the world. You are most welcome. The global pandemic has shown just how fragile we are as humans, yet also how creative and resilient we can be when we pray and work together to bring hope and a sense of caring for each other and for the wider ecumenical family. We are one world and one human family. Prayer is one of the fruits that is born out of our abiding in Christ's love. May our time of prayer together today renew our commitment to the call made in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 to pray without ceasing. The first week of prayer for Christian unity began in 1908 as the octave of Christian unity and focused on prayer for Christian unity. The week of prayer for Christian unity has been jointly organized by the World Council of Churches and the Pontifical Council for Promoting a Christian Unity of the Roman Catholic Church since 1968. In the Southern Hemisphere, where January is a vacation time, churches often find other days to celebrate it. For example, around Pentecost, also a symbolic date for unity. The community of Grand Champ in Switzerland were invited to prepare the theme for 2021. And they chose the theme, Abide in my love, and you shall bear much fruit, according to John chapter 15, 5 to 9. This allowed the community's 50 sisters from diverse confessions and countries to share the wisdom of their contemplative life abiding in the life of God. As we gather in prayer, we do so as an affirmation and expression of our common vocation to pray for Christian unity and reconciliation among our human family. We pray with the fellowship across the globe that we shall all find in the love of Christ, the courage and hope to continue firmly on the path to unity, justice, and peace. Let us gather in prayer. Sisters and brothers in Christ, this year, the theme of the week of prayer for Christian unity chosen by the sisters of the community of Grandchamp 
in Switzerland is abide in my love and you shall bear much fruit. It is the great desire of God expressed by Jesus that we might come to him and abide in him. He waits for us tirelessly, hoping that united to him in love, we will bear fruit that will bring life to all. Faced with the difference of the other, we risk withdrawing into ourselves and seeing only that which separates us. But let us listen to how Christ calls us to abide in his love and so bear much fruit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are the vine dresser who cares for us with love. You call on us to see the beauty of each branch united to the vine, the beauty of each person united to you in Christ through the Holy Spirit. And yet, too often, the differences in others make us afraid. We withdraw into ourselves. Our trust in you is forsaken. Enmity develops between us. Come and direct our hearts toward you once again. Grant us to live from your forgiveness so that we may be together and praise your name. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all iniquity? 
who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord works vindicated justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and graceful, gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion of his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we were made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it and it is gone and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. To those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Abide in me. 
that I abide in you. Thus, let the branch that must bear fruit by itself, and let it abide in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branch. Those who abide in me and I in them bear not much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withered. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciple. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that you, your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one. You are my friend. not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you this command so that you may love one another. Shaina washra Dear sisters and brothers in Christ's love, we are called as Christians and churches to move from separation to full visible communion in faith, life, mission, and witness. This is the core vocation of the World Council of Churches. But this vocation cannot and will not be fulfilled if we do not pray together for the realization of this calling and vision. As we pray for the realization of this vision, we abide in Christ's love, who prayed for our unity. And as we abide in Christ's love, our sisters of Grand Champ call us to grow as Christians and churches in mutual belonging, mutual support, mutual accountability, and even in the sharing of our mutual vulnerabilities. In a world faced with common global challenges related, for instance, to the climate emergency, systemic economic injustice, and several forms of human discrimination such as white supremacism and racism, our abiding in Christ's love and our growth in fellowship may inspire greater solidarity with those in the margins as a sign of our hope and prayer for the reconciliation of all things in Christ. Let us live after this prayer, inspired by the theme 
of the next General Assembly of the World Council of Churches, which is so closely connected with the theme of this year's Week of Prayer for Christian Unity, which is Christ's love moves the world to reconciliation and unity. Blessings, amen. Let us pray. God of love, through Christ you said to us, you did not choose me, but I chose you. You seek us, you invite us to receive your friendship and abide in it. Teach us to respond more deeply to this invitation and grow in a life that is ever more complete. The joy of our heart is in God. God of life, you call us to be praised in the midst of the world and to welcome one another as a gift of your grace. May your loving gaze, which rests upon each person, open us to receive each other just as we are. The joy of our heart is in God. God who gathers, you knit us together in your son, Jesus. May your loving spirit abide in us at parish meetings and local ecumenical gatherings. Grant that together we might celebrate you with joy. The joy of our heart is in God. God of the one vineyard, you call us to abide in your love in all we do and say. Touched by your goodness, grant us to be a reflection of that love in our homes and workplaces. May we pave the way for bridging rivalries and overcoming tensions. The joy of our heart is in God. Let us add to our invocation some verses from the Psalms. God be merciful to us and bless us so that we can strengthen our desire and our enthusiasm for the unity of Christians. Our Lord guide us to work according to our potentialities in the specific occasions that arise for promoting interaction and common weakness. It is clear that it is not enough only to receive and to benefit from the divine blessings and gifts. Certainly, we are also obliged 
to share his truth and love with others. As the psalm continues, that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. The unity we are asking for is clearly connected to our essential witness in today's world, a world that suffers from the virus of egocentrism, individual or collective, that is manifested through aggression, injustice, corruption, poverty, violence, terrorism. Strengthening our unity and dynamic witness is the most appropriate doxology to God. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Gazing with hope at the incarnate world, who reveals the fullness of love of the triune God, let us contribute through words and deeds so that mere coexistence may be transformed into a communion of love in Christ. Holy Spirit, you create and recreate the church in all places. Come and whisper in our hearts the prayer which Jesus addressed to his Father on the eve of his Passion, that they may all be one, so that the world may believe. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, light the fire of your love in us so that suspicions, contempt and misunderstandings cease in the church. May the walls that separate us fall. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Holy Spirit, Consul of all, open our hearts to forgiveness and reconciliation and bring us back from our wanderings. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Holy Spirit, you never abandon men, women, and children who are persecuted for their fidelity to the gospel. Give them strength and courage and support those who help them. Kyrie eleison, Lord, have mercy. taken from the parable of the wine and the branches that Jesus told to the apostles just before his arrest and death. During his last evening spent with his closest disciples, he also prayed for the unity of his followers. Jesus, who awaits in the love of the Father, is the true wine and desires to share this love with his disciples. The parable 
teaches us that we cannot be a fruit separated from him. Only when we remain joined to Jesus as branches to the vine can we produce fruit in abundance. Fertile branches are true believers who by their living union with Christ produce much fruit. The image of branches helps us understand that we are all diverse as individuals, but in the church we are brought together sent to one wine, Christ, who nourishes us with his life-giving sap, his grace. We can also apply the image of branches to members of different Christian traditions. These parables help us to understand that Christians of various confessions, with their history, with their traditions, with their spiritual and cultural treasures, are gifts from God that can enrich each other in a reconciled ecclesial community. The root of the church communion is Christ, who enables us to overcome our prejudices and see each other as brothers and sisters, joined to him and to each other through faith and baptism. Apart from Christ, our human efforts for the restoration of unity among Christians will remain unfruitful. At the very heart of any fruitful ecumenism, there is prayer. Jesus prayed to the Father for us, so that we might be one, and we need to follow his example by praying for each other, and praying together for Christianity. Disconnected from the prayer, will not be an expected fruit. Whenever we pray for our unity, we deepen and strengthen our communion with Christ and among us, believers of various traditions attached to the same life-giving wine, Christ. But our ecumenical prayer and action is not limited to Christians only. Jesus did not die only for Christians. He gave his life for all out of his love for all, so all we are redeemed by him could be of much fruit. So as a ecumenical family, we also pray for the world, that all may come to believe in Christ's love for them as a fruit of our common witness. Our ecumenical relations indicate the ways that can lead to a rapprochement, peaceful coexistence, cooperation and fraternity among all men. Together, we need to be Christ's prophetic voice in the world by seeking justice, peace, reconciliation and fraternity not only among Christians, but also among all believers and non-believers, and among all people within our one human family. God of life, you have created every human being in your image and likeness. We sing your praise for the gift of our many cultures, expressions of faith, traditions and ethnicities. Grant us the courage always to stand against injustices and hatred based on race, class, gender, religion, and the fear of those not like ourselves. God of peace, God of love, in you is our hope. Merciful God, despite our divisions as churches, 
your spirit shows us as we come together in prayer that we are one in our allegiance to Christ. Teach us to use this gift in the world so that the believers of all faiths in every country may be able to listen to each other and live in peace. God of hope, God of peace, God of love, in you is our hope. Oh Jesús, tú viniste al mundo y compartiste plenamente nuestra humanidad. Tú conoces las dificultades de las vidas de las personas que sufren en formas tan diversas. Que el espíritu de la compasión nos impulse a compartir nuestro tiempo nuestras vidas y nuestros bienes con los necesitados, especialmente con nuestros hermanos y nuestras hermanas de Chipre, Grecia y Turquía, a quienes recordamos en esta semana en el ciclo ecuménico de oración. God of peace, God of love, in you is our hope. Espíritu Santo, tú que sientes la ira de nuestra creación herida y escuchas los lamentos de quienes ya padecen los efectos del cambio climático, guíanos hacia nuevos compromisos. Que aprendamos a vivir en armonía como parte de tu creación. God of peace, God of love, in you is our hope. from the sin which is in us, leading us to prefer our will to yours, from prejudice and blindness in our souls, in our nation, and in our religious fellowship. Good Lord, deliver us from unreadiness to hear your call and from slothfulness in our obedience, from racial pride and the national arrogance, whereby we mar the harmony of life in your great family. Good Lord, deliver us from easy contentment with what is familiar and from hesitation in making adventures of your kingdom from failure to recognize your Holy Spirit, dispensing other gifts differing from those which we have received. Good Lord, deliver us. With the words that Jesus taught us, let us now pray together in the language of our hearts, the Lord's Prayer, so I invite us then to all unmute our mics as together we pray. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Give us not in the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 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 And we close our time of prayer together as we join in the benediction. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and all peace and faith so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and, and of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the World Council of Churches, Faith and Order, I wish to thank all who have uh, prepared this closing prayer of this year's Week of Prayer for Christian Unity under the leadership of Reverend Dr. Mikey Roberts. Our deep gratitude goes also to heads of churches, church leaders who have kindly joined us and addressed us. Thanks also to members of the leadership of the World Council of Churches and its central committee. And many thanks to our colleagues of the WCC Secretariat in Geneva for their active participation. May God bless us on the way to unity. <laughs>